Good morning, everyone. We'll be starting here shortly as more people join our webinar. All right, Colby, are we good? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone to webinar three on accelerated learning committees. I'd like to take a moment to introduce our awesome team that's going to be presenting to you today. Of course, I'm Monica Ruiz Mills, and I'll be presenting and facilitating this webinar. We also have Colby Self, Director of Texas Tutoring Supports. We have Dr. Julie Lotta, our Director of English Learner Support Division. And we have Jacob Klett, Director of Special Education and Strategic Integration. So welcome, and thank you again for being here. And Colby, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to you. We have a couple objectives for today's presentation. Um, overall, to provide a foundational overview of House Bill 4545 and also to provide context and guidance for accelerated learning committees. So there'll be a lot of information uh, presented today. You may wanna write down your questions. And as we progress through the different areas, uh, feel free to add it to the Q&A section. If your uh, questions will be answered as time allows, and many of the questions you may have will be answered as part of the presentation. As time permits, uh, we'll try to get to those. And if not, we'll work them into our FAQ that we've been hosting for House Bill 4545. An overview of the agenda today. Uh, first off, we'll start with a recap, uh, talk a little more about accelerated learning committees. Um, we'll also talk about the participants, ARDS and LPACs, and more about webinar four um, information coming up. So a recap about accelerated instruction. If you joined us at our last webinar, we talked about the requirements to meet uh, accelerated instruction. We had option one, which is about assigning teachers who are certified as master exemplary or recognized. With little over 4,000 teachers in this option, it's really gonna limit uh, that for LEAs. So option two was what we focused on more in the last presentation, and that is tutoring. So accelerate, just a reminder, accelerated instruction is for students who um, did not perform satisfactorily or did not test on star grades three through eight or EOC assessments. Some other requirements uh, for House Bill 4545 and the accelerated learning requirement were that the, the instruction had to be supplemental to normal instruction you need a minimum of 30 total hours during the subsequent summer or school year. And the, the tutoring must occur at least one time per week. There, there's not any time parameters on how much, that set, how much time that session would need to take up, but it does require the one time per week. And the group ratio was another parameter that needs to be thought of as being three to one, three students to one teacher with exceptions of a parent waiver can allow for larger group sizes if needed. The other parameter that uh, we often talk about and I know has been a question in the FAQ is a reminder that the tutors need to be trained on the materials, the instructional materials that they'll be using. And the district has the, the LEA has the ultimate oversight of the tutors and, and how they operate. So, the other um, issue that has been a question that we've clarified is that students cannot be removed from foundational curriculum. This also includes activities such as recess or physical activity and enrichment curriculum. And some examples, uh, low fine arts, CTE, health PE, tech apps, et cetera. So those were the key points from House Bill 45, uh, 45 and accelerated instruction. So I'm gonna transition now uh, to Dr. Ruiz Mills. He's gonna to talk to you a little bit more about the accelerated um, committees and the decision matrix with that. Dr. Mills. Thank you, Colby. So we have here just what the decision matrix would look like in determining if a student needed to participate in accelerated instruction. 
So as you can see in the blue diamond, did the student perform satisfactorily on the STAR or STAR EOC assessment? And just to recap, performing satisfactorily means that the student performed at the approaches meets or masters level. If they didn't perform at those levels, uh, then they would require accelerated instruction for the 30 hours per subject. However, if they did perform satisfactorily, again, meaning they scored at the approaches meets or masters, then no action is required. So let's go ahead and look at a question that we received after uh, the last session. So the question there says, is accelerated instruction for first time STAR EOC assessment testers, or does it include students who have taken the STAR multiple times? House Bill 4545 says that any student who did not achieve or perform satisfactorily, at least in the approaches area, in any subject assessed, must receive accelerated instruction. So accelerated instruction is required anytime a student does not pass a STAR end of course assessment. This includes first time testers as well as the retesters. Next slide please Colby. So the accelerated learning committees, uh, we've been getting questions regarding who can be on these committees. Of course, we have the principal or the principal's designee is required, the student or the student's parent or guardian, and of course, the teacher of the subject of an assessment on which the student failed to pass. That has been generating quite a few questions, and that is really the teacher of the relevant subject. We did address it in the FAQ asking, um, stating that if the previous teacher and the incoming teacher could both be on the accelerated learning committee, but we do understand as this is starting to roll out, we are saying that the teacher of the relevant subject uh, is the one that would be required to be on the committee. In the oval there, we have circled that because we put students who perform unsatisfactorily on the assessment in the same subject in the subsequent school year, the superintendent or the designee would then become part of that committee. So you know who the required members are, but let's discuss how we determine which students are uh, receive are part of an accelerated learning committee. The accelerated learning committee uh, requ requirements for the student requires a school district to establish an accelerated learning committee for each student who didn't perform satisfactorily on the state assessments in reading or math in grades three, grades five, or grades eight. From there, that committee must get together and establish a plan for the student. And that plan must be documented in writing with a copy provided to the student's parent guardian. And those educational plans must be in place by the start of the subsequent school year. So House Bill 4545 says the start of the school year in August. But if you were able to use the summer based on the pre on the data that you received, some may have already begun that process. And students are required to perform at the appropriate grade level by the conclusion of the school year. So if a student does not perform satisfactorily on an assessment in the subsequent school year, then the ALC must identify the reason adjust the learning plans to ensure the student's success and provide additional support and resources. And then that's where the superintendent or the designee would also become involved. I think we have a decision matrix that outlines all of this. So adding to the decision matrix that we just saw, we're gonna go ahead and uh, review this again. Did the student perform satisfactorily on the STAR or end of course assessment? 
If the answer is yes, then no action required. If the answer is no, then accelerated instruction is required for 30 hours per subject. Was the student in third, fifth, or eighth grade? And did the student perform satisfactorily uh, in math or reading? If the student did not perform satisfactorily, the ALC is required. If the student performed satisfactorily, then there is no ALC required. We have received questions regarding, well, what if the student did not uh, test in the spring of 21? The LEA can then administer an assessment aligned to the teeth in the subject in which they would have tested. Once the LEA has determined what TEKS aligned assessment is going to be used, then it is a local decision to determine if the assessment shows that the student performed satisfactorily and if accelerated instruction is required. And the next slide, this is a recommendation, but we thought we would put together an agenda of what an ALC conversation would look like. So of course there would be an introduction introducing all of the people who are part of the committee. You have the purpose of the meeting where you would review the House Bill 4545 requirement that, um, that includes the Accelerated Learning Committee. And then there would be a review of the assessment data either the reading or the math data or potentially both. So you would do this review of the data with the parents there and the teacher and the principal or the designee. And you would provide teacher feedback, teacher could answer any questions. You would have parent feedback, parent could ask any questions or answer any questions as you're going through the process. And you would develop the plan. How will accelerated instruction occur? When will it occur? What will it look like? The role of the school, does the student need transportation? The communication we're gonna to provide to the parent and the student. The student responsibilities, uh, attending the sessions if they're outside of the school day. And then the parent uh, responsibilities, ensuring that the student attends, communicating with the school uh, with any unforeseen circumstances or improvements that they're seeing, but really keeping that open dialogue uh, prominent throughout these conversations. And then finally, any final questions in closing of the meeting and the next time there will be communication sent home. As we've been going through this process, we've been receiving questions regarding the role of the ARD committees uh, in the accelerated learning committee. So I am going to turn this over to Jacob Clutt, and he is going to go ahead and begin his portion of this session. Mr. Clutt. Thank you, Dr. Ruiz Mills, and good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to, to be here with everyone this morning. Um, and as was stated, I'll be addressing some of the most commonly asked questions so far around HB 4545 requirements um, for the accelerated learning committees as they relate to admission review and dismissal or ARD committees for students who are served by special education. Um, so we'll start with question, the, the first question, and this is one that has come in uh, quite frequently. Uh, which asks whether the requirements for accelerated learning committees apply in addition to admission review and dismissal or ARD committees for students who are served by special education or whether it is the ARD committees who create the accelerated learning plan uh, for students with disabilities who are, who are served in special education with an IEP. Uh, and so the answer to that question um, is for those students who are served by special education, um, and who are in grades three, five, and eight, and did not pass the STAR reading or the STAR math assessment, uh, the ARD committee must meet and serve as the accelerated learning committee for those students. 
Um, so the art committee should meet, uh, they should address the student's need for accelerated learning, and they should document how the student will participate in accelerated instruction within um, the indiv Individualized Education Program, or IEP. Um, and just to recap again, that means the student uh, who did not pass did not achieve at least the level of approaches on the STAR. There are several uh, participants who must be included in the ARD committee. Uh, when the ARD committee convenes to serve the purpose of the Accelerated Learning Committee under HB 4545, that committee must be a properly constituted ARD committee. Um, and therefore, it must include several participants. Uh, that would includes the parent uh, or the guardian of the child who has an IEP, at least one regular education teacher of the child, and when possible, uh, the teacher who is responsible for implementing a portion of the child's IEP, at least one special education teacher or provider for that child, a representative of the local education agency, uh, so the district or the charter school, someone who can interpret the instructional implications of evaluation results, and of course, um, the child or the student where, where that is appropriate or where the student is um, of transition age. And of course, uh, you know, if we could go back to the other one really quick, sorry. Um, these are the participants that ARD committees are, are always required to include. So this information is likely not new for many folks on the call. Um, However, you know, in thinking about the HB 4545 requirements um, for general education students, that requires accelerated learning committees to include the teacher of the subject, um, the subject of the assessment instrument on which the student did not perform satisfactorily. And so again, for uh, students in grades three, five, and eight, we're looking at uh, the star areas of reading and math. Um, so for the purposes of convening the ARD committee as the accelerated learning committee in these areas, it is recommended that the ARD committee include a reading or, or math teacher who's familiar with the appropriate TEKS and general education curriculum in, in the area where the student failed to perform satisfactorily. Uh, this will help to ensure that the student's needs for accelerated instruction um, in, in these areas are appropriately met as the art committee is designing the accelerated learning plan for the student. And we can go to the next one, please. Uh, so another commonly asked question that's been coming in is whether the HB 4545 requirements for an accelerated learning committee apply to students who are served by special education and who participated in the STAR alternate two assessment. And the answer to that question is that students who participate in the STAR Alternate 2 are our students served by special education within that local education agency. Um, so for these students, the ARD committee uh, must meet and must consider the needs of, of the student who is unsuccessful in reading and or math in grades three, five, or eight. And this does include students who meet the criteria for participation in STAR Alternate 2. Uh, our committees must also consider the student's need for accelerated instruction in the subject or subjects uh, where the student was not, um, did not perform satisfactorily and should also determine how the student will engage in an accelerated learning uh, program based on the student's strengths and needs as outlined in the IEP. Another common question has to do with uh, parental disagreement uh, as it relates to the ARD committee and accelerated instruction. Um, so specifically, if a parent disagrees with the ARD committee's decision regarding accelerated instruction and that ARD meeting ends in a disagreement, does the ARD committee have the authority to adjust HB 4545's requirements to meet uh, parent requests? Uh, and this, this is a great question. Um, and so, the, the answer is actually uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, so if the members of the R committee are unable to reach agreement regarding accelerated instruction for a student with a disability, uh, in, and again, they're acting as the accelerated learning committee related to STAR reading or STAR math. Um, so if the members of the R committee are not able to reach an agreement for whatever reason, um, that disagreement should be addressed consistent with the process for addressing any, any other R committee disagreement. Um, so, you know, local education agencies should already have a, a 
process and system in place for addressing our committee disagreements um, and disagreements related to the requirements of HB 4545 and the Accelerated Learning Committee uh, really are no different than addressing a disagreement for an, any other issue where the ARD ends, ends in a disagreement. Um, and yeah, thank you. Um, so follow-up question to that um, is also, if a student does have an IEP, can the ARD committee waive um, all of the HB 4545 requirements? Um, and, and in fact, uh, the ARD committee cannot waive the requirements. Uh, so HB 4545 requires that ARD committees for students who are served by special education, uh, for them to consider how the student will participate in an accelerated instruction program. Uh, again, if that student was not successful on the STAR reading assessment or the STAR math assessment, um, and the student is in third, fifth, or eighth grade. The ARD committee is responsible for developing the accelerated learning plan uh, for the student with a disability, and, and that requirement cannot be waived. Um, and so to say a little bit more about that, um, there's been some related question to this about whether the IEP can serve as um, the accelerated learning plan. Um, so I'd like to just kind of talk through a couple examples. So um, as, as I'd stated, the ARD committee is required under HB 4545 to consider the student's accelerated learning needs. And the IEP does not by default replace the student's accelerated learning plan if the student has, say, existing goals in reading um, or math or existing services in reading or math. Um, in that circumstance, so a uh, student has an IEP with goals and services in reading or math, um, and that student was not successful in STAR, um, the ARD committee should review the student's current PLAF, uh, present levels of academic achievement and functional performance, um, the student's annual IEP goals, and any progress monitoring data related to those goal areas where accelerated learning is required under HB 4545 and determine whether adjustments to the current provision of services may be needed. Um, so one example, maybe we have a student with an existing reading goal and existing reading services who failed the STAR reading in spring 2021. The ARD committee uh, should convene, review the progress monitoring data around the student's IEP services and goals and reading. Um, and if, the, if they look at that data and the, and, the serv and the data indicates that if they continue with the services as they've been providing, um, the trajectory of that data indicates that the student will achieve adequate performance by the next STAR administration. In this instance, the ARD committee uh, should doc document that discussion um, and the review of that data and, and the IEP goals may serve as the accelerated learning plan because it effectively shows that if the student continues with the plan, um, the data indicates that the student will be successful by the next administration of the assessment. On the flip side of that, um, we might have a situation where a student with an IEP, um, let's again, just use the example of reading. So let's say a student has an existing reading goal and services, um, again, failed the spring 2021 star in reading. The ARD committee comes together, reviews the student's progress monitoring data related to those reading goals. And as they're looking at that data, it really indicates that the student um, is just not making progress quickly enough. Uh, to achieve a passing standard by the next administration of STAR. Um, so in that instance, the ARD committee uh, should develop an accelerated learning plan that is complementary to and supplementary to the existing goals and services um, and implement that plan to facilitate the student success. Uh, we can go to the next question, thank you. Um, so this question has to do with intensive programs of instruction. And this is a, a pretty common question that um, has been coming in. Um, as ARD committees now have a requirement under House Bill 4545 uh, to convene and serve as the accelerated learning committee, again, for students in third, fifth, and eighth grade who uh, are not, uh, do not perform satisfactorily on uh, star reading or star math. Um, however, the ARD committee already had an existing requirement uh, to develop intensive programs of instruction for students uh, served by special education where they're not successful um, on one or more areas of, of the STAR assessment. 
And so the, the question, uh, which is a great question that, that we've received is, would, would now the accelerated instruction need to be documented within the IEP as the intensive program of instruction or the IPI? And does this requirement take the place of or now become the IPI for the student? Um, and so in fact, HB 4545 made changes to TEC section 280211. Intensive programs of instruction or IPI are required under TEC section 28.02 and three. Um, so therefore the requirements for ARD committees related to IPI uh, have actually not been changed. And, and so to say a little bit more about that, the accelerated learning plan that the ALC, uh, the ARD committee serving as the ALC um, is, is supposed to create is, is very specific. Um, this plan for accelerated learning applies to the specific areas of need as evidenced by reading your math performance on the STAR. Uh, the IPI is actually a little bit broader requirement, so there will likely be some overlap between an accelerated learning plan and an intensive program of instruction. Uh, however, it's not necessarily going to be a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two. Um, so, for, for example, uh, the ARD committee may, in some cases, where a student requires an accelerated learning committee under the HB 4545 requirements, and also requires an IPI based on their STAR performance, um, the ARD committee can strategically develop these plans in conjunction with each other. Um, so uh, as an example, we can think about a student in fifth grade who, who failed the math assessment or failed the STAR math assessment. Um, in this case, the, the ARD committee is required to serve as the ALC under House Bill 4545 and also has a responsibility to develop an intensive program of instruction. Uh, so the ARD committee should consider the student's accelerated learning needs um, as they relate to math and develop the accelerated learning plan. Um, and components of that accelerated learning plan uh, may also be reflected in the student's IPI. Now, the IPI may contain other strategies as well, um, you know, in addition to uh, what's determined around accelerated learning, um, strategies that uh, would be intended to support the student's um, trajectory of growth and learning in that area of need. So again, they, they are still separate requirements, the Accelerated Learning Committee under HB 4545 and the Intensive Program of Instruction. Uh, however, they are complementary to each other and, and the ARD Committee may strategically consider them uh, together in, in certain circumstances where um, both requirements apply for a child. Uh, so the next question um, is asking that is asking that since the ARD committee serves as the accelerated learning committee for students in grades three, five, and eight who are served by special education, do decisions about an accelerated learning program require an ARD committee meeting, or could changes be made through the amendment process? Um, and we've alluded to this already in uh, the answer to the earlier question. Um, and really, HB 4545 requires that the ARD committee of uh, students served by special education to meet. Um, and that ARD committee must be a properly constituted ARD committee. Um, and that ARD committee must determine how the student will participate in an accelerated learning program. Um, the ARD committee should contain, uh, should include the required committee members when they're making decisions regarding uh, that student's accelerated instruction program and document those decisions in the student's IEP. Um, so again, uh, the LEA it is required to establish accelerated learning committees or ALCs for students who, who were not successful and star reading and math in grades three, five, and eight, uh, beginning at the start of the, the 21-22 school year in August. Um, it would be beneficial for LEAs to begin establishing these committees and developing student plans um, as soon as possible, uh, potentially uh, yet in summer of 2021. Um, this does mean that students in third, fifth, and eighth grade who failed uh, to pass the STAR reading or math assessment in spring 2021 must have our committee meetings to develop an accelerated learning plan uh, by the start of the 2021-2022 school year. Uh, we recognize that this may require an additional ARD meeting for some students. Uh, if a student does happen to have an annual ARD meeting 
at the beginning of the school year that would otherwise be held uh, by the first day of instruction in the upcoming school year uh, that the that our committee could convene for the purpose of the annual meeting and also considering accelerated instruction needs. Um, however, if that's not the case, then uh, that would mean the art committee must convene to develop an accelerated learning plan um, for the student if that student's annual art is not in, uh, does not otherwise occur until later in the school year. Um, in other circumstances where an accelerated learning committee is not required to meet under HB 4545, um, so other circumstances, um, the art committee may use the amendment process if the parent and the LEA can agree to the changes uh, to be made to the IDP. All right, uh, the next question has to do with the required participants. Um, and we've spoken a little bit about the, the teacher's attendance at the art committee, um, and, but this is a common question that we've been receiving as well. Uh, so if the parent is not able to attend the ARD meeting or the teacher of the subject where the student failed um, in the SAR assessment is not able to attend, then can the ARD committee proceed without, without the student's parent or guardian or, or potentially without um, that teacher of the subject area where the student was not successful? Um, and so we've, we've spoken about the, the teacher in the earlier response uh, regarding the properly constituted ARD committee, but I'd like to say a little bit more here about uh, the LEA's involvement of the student's parent, uh, guardian, or family member. Um, so just, just to reiterate, when our committees convene for the purpose of serving as the accelerated learning committee, um, those ARDs must be properly constituted in accordance with both state and IDEA uh, federal requirements. Efforts um, that are always made to ensure parental participation in the ARD process and are specified within the requirements of IDEA um, apply in these circumstances as well. Um, so if IDEA does require that parents be notified of the ARD meeting early enough to ensure that they have an opportunity to attend and that the ARD committee meeting is scheduled at a mutually agreed upon time and place. Uh, parents must be provided the notice of meeting that includes the purpose, the time and the location of meeting as well as who will be in attendance and inform the parent of the participation of other individuals uh, on that art committee who have knowledge or special expertise about, uh, about the student. When it comes to parent participation in the art process um, for the purposes of serving as the accelerated learning committee and for any purpose, um, the local education agency must ensure that the parent of students served by special education um, if, if they are unable to attend that ARD committee meeting, um, the, the local education agency should offer other methods of participation. Um, and this could be conference calls or teleconference calls uh, that are used to ensure that the parent is able to participate um, through alternate means if they're not able to attend in person. Um, now an ARD committee meeting for the purposes of serving as an ALC and again for any purpose, um, may in some circumstances be conducted without the student's parent or guardian or family member in attendance. Um, however, this should only occur if the LEA is unable to convince the parent that they should attend. If this is the case, the LEA should um, maintain records, uh, keep, keep good records of its attempt to arrange a mutually agreed upon time and place, um, such as detailed logs of telephone calls that are made to the student's family um, and the results of those attempts maintain copies of correspondence that may have been sent um, to the student's parent or family member um, and any received responses uh, in relation to that, that correspondence. Um, if visits to the student's home or place of, or I'm sorry, the student's parent's home or student's uh, parent's place of employment um, have been attempted to uh, convince them to attend the art committee meeting for this purpose, uh, keep records of those visits as well um, and maintain those records uh, and if, good faith efforts to engage the parent uh, have, have in fact been attempted and the LEA is unable to convince the parent that they should attend, um, the ARD committee may proceed as a properly constituted ARD. All right, um, and the uh, final commonly asked question that we'll cover today uh, actually has to do with section 504 plan. Um, so many folks are wondering if a student has a Section 504 plan, 
Um, does the 504 committee then serve as the accelerated learning committee or ALC? Um, and here, HB 4545 does not explicitly address 504 committees. Um, this being the case, districts must consider accelerated learning needs of students with, with a Section 504 plan and convene accelerated learning committees in a manner consistent with the general education requirements. Um, so here, the requirements of HB 4545 that, that apply to all students also apply for students with a 504 plan. Um, this includes all requirements for convening an accelerated learning committee and determining a student's accelerated learning needs through the general education process. Uh, where a student with the 504 plan uh, requires accelerated learning because they were not successful um, in reading or math on the prior administration of the STAR, um, as defined in, in HB 4545, then um, the district must convene an ALC. Um, the student with the Section 504 plan, uh, the, the committee that's responsible for overseeing the implementation of that plan and developing that plan should certainly be informed and involved. Uh, however, uh, House Bill 4545 does not explicitly address the 504 committee or require them to serve as the ALC as it does for students served in special education and the requirement for ARD committees uh, to serve as the ALC. Thank you, Mr. Klett, for providing that information to us today. We're gonna to take those questions that were on this presentation and we will put those on the FAQ that will be released next week. Um, also, we're gonna go ahead and turn this over to Dr. Lotta, and she's going to discuss the role of the LPAC. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining this morning. Um, I'm Julie Lotta, the Director of the English Learner Support Division. Um, I'm gonna take this opportunity to first start off the conversation with, um, you will likely be hearing um, uh, terminology change. Um, we are no, in the state, the new legislation has passed to um, identify previously identified LEP or English learners as emergent bilinguals. And so I'll start to, we all need to start practicing changing the terminology to alert emergent bilingual. Um, so the common question was, may the LPAC serve as the ALC if the requirements are met? And if you'll go to the next slide, please. If you can see here, the LPAC, uh, the required members for an LPAC are an administrator, a bilingual or ESL teacher, and a parent representative. And I have an asterisk by that because um, due to COVID, we actually provided flexibilities that a parent representative was optional, highly encouraged, but optional. And that will likely stay in effect until the end of the calendar year. And if you notice the ALC, there's an administrator as well, but the teacher of the, the relevant subject and a parent or family member of the emergent bilingual. And so in order to ensure equity um, for emergent bilinguals and to have very intentional conversations about the, the needs for accelerated learning, we are asking that the ALC convene as directed for any other general education student, but that you then uh, have an LPAC member attend that ALC. Um, that is the LPAC um, uh, representative, sorry, um, will bring information to that conversation around linguistic accommodations uh, but again, they are not, they may or may not be the person that is um, an expert in the TEKS related to that content area. So they are coming with the lens of um, uh, linguistic accommodations for the student. Uh, the other thing I would also say, I've seen a couple of questions in the chat that I feel um, we can answer really quickly is that I would, it's, it's important that you would provide the information to the, to the, in the home language of the family uh, at, at the meeting. So you might need an interpreter there. Um, if the family members um, um, speak in a language other than English. And I saw something about um, um, language of assessment or language of the, the actual um, tutoring. If the student is taking a Spanish assessment, then the language of instruction, I'm sorry, the language of the accelerated instruction would need to be in Spanish. Um, but I have, that was pretty quick. Um, again, English learners or emergent bilinguals are general education students first. And so do for them what you would do for your other students, but also um, for the purposes of linguistic accommodations and conversations around that, please include an LPAC representative. Thank you, Dr. Lotta. 
And before we get to the question and answers, right here is our slide that has the QR codes for the Accelerated Learning website and our House Bill 4545 FAQs. And you can also send your additional questions to accelerated.instruction at tea.texas.gov. And we do have our webinar four coming up next week, which will be on resources uh, where we can, where we will share with you just some of our templates that we have been creating. You can still register for that. It is on July 29th at 11 o'clock a.m. And one of the questions that we have been receiving is when the accelerated learning committees should begin. House Bill 4545 states at the start of the school year in August for this upcoming year, and then starting in the following year, that would be uh, for 2022, the accelerated learning committees would already have been meeting prior to the start of 22. But we know that right now, if you have not been able to start the process um, at the beginning of the year is when you can start. Um, developing your ALCs. Um, Ms. Ridgway and Ms. Aguide are also helping man the Q&A. Are there any questions that you would like to answer that you have seen? I think the one question I keep um, hearing is what happens if a parent is, you know, wants to opt out or waive the accelerated instruction and they are not able to do that? And then, um, and so accelerated instruction um, under TEC 280211 is subject to compulsory attendance. So if uh, the parent isn't, if the student is not like participating or showing up for tutoring, if that's happening before or after school, um, then those compulsory at um, attendance requirements would apply to them. Um, and we wanna make sure that, that parents understand that they cannot opt out of accelerated instruction. Thank you, Ms. Ridgway. Ms. Aguide, do you have any questions that we need to address? No, um, I just wanna state that there's lots of questions that um, we weren't able to get to today, but we will be updating the FAQ document to address your, your questions. Okay, one of the questions that I see is recommendations for beginning of your assessments, and that will be, a local decision so the LEA can determine which assessment is used, uh, ensuring that it is aligned to the TEKS. Okay, Mr. Clett, Dr. Lotta, anything else you would like to add? I'm scrolling through the questions. I don't see any either. Um, but just as a reminder, if you have questions related to um, 4545 for emergent bilinguals, continue to send it to, to y'all's inbox, the 4545 inbox, so that we have consistent messaging. Yes, that would, there it is, accelerated.instruction at tea.texas.gov. So we will pull these questions at the end of the webinar and start uh, dispersing them to the appropriate department so we can get the answers and place them on the upcoming FAQ that will be released next week. An so, LPAC member is, is required. An LPAC member is required at the uh, ALC. Jacob, are there any questions there, Colby? No, I'm scrolling through the chat as well. Um, we've definitely hit on some of the common themes so far, uh, but just to reiterate, please continue to send your questions to the inbox here on the screen. Um, and thank you to, to everybody who submitted questions today. Um, for those related to the our committee's responsibilities, we'll, we'll definitely look through these and um, make sure that they're added to the FAQ and that you have the information you need as, as quickly as possible. So, Thank you for your questions and your participation today. Yeah, and Dr. Reese Mills, I just wanted to add, we are at one month and one week since House Bill 4545 was signed into law. And so this team has been working extremely hard to get um, kind of guidance out, resources out as soon as possible. And we also know that educators across the state are trying to 
um, get familiar with the language, to put processes and procedures in place so that they are ready for the start of the school year. We are trying to create um, kind of as much flexibility and, and policy calls to help knowing that this is a, a quick turnaround time and we are, we are trying to get these in place for the start of the 21-22 school year. So as much as possible, um, you know, we ask that you kind of use it as a timeline, knowing that in future years, we will not have that flexibility. Um, and so I really appreciate everyone attending these webinars. I also encourage you to continue to attend any webinars. I know that the July 29th will be of particular interest because we will be releasing um, and introducing some uh, resources to communicate with parents, some um, resources to help the accelerated learning committees in kind of the development of their agendas and their talking points. Um, and then those would be available on a rolling basis. So a huge shout out to Dr. Ruiz Mills and the rest of the team who have um, can, been working tirelessly to try to get information out to y'all as soon as possible. So thank y'all for understanding and for being great partners in this work. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you. And if you have any resources you would like to share with us, please feel free to send them as well to the accelerated.instruction uh, email box. So we will see you next week and have a great day. Thank you.